What's up, amigos? It's Chris Lewitt back with another Project Maker Minute. As you may know, I'm the former number one for Cornell University and pro circuit player, elite junior development coach, author and educator, author of The Secrets of Spanish Tennis and The Tennis Technique Bible. On this Project Maker Minute, I'm feeling, I'm reminiscing about Spain. I'm feeling a little homesick for Spain, for Barcelona, my home away from home. And I was just thinking back to I'm taking a trip down memory lane and thinking about how, you know, all the experiences that I had when I first started traveling and studying in Spain, visiting the best academies in Spain, and my impressions, you know, as a young American coach back in the day, this is 15 or 20 years ago. I may look young now, but I'm getting a lot older. You know, I would, Spain, transform me, training in Spain, studying with the best coaches in Spain, visiting the, the elite academies in Spain, transform me as a coach. So one of the things that really sticks out in my memory is that players in Spain, when I would visit there, would use the entire space of the court. They would use the full back court, 10, 15, 20 feet sometimes behind the baseline, and they would move in and out this way and what I later learned is that's sort of called the X pattern that Pato Alvarez, the famous Spanish coach, invented. But the idea of moving deep into the court, all the way to the recesses of the court, back to the, to the fence sometimes to play defense. And that was completely uh, st very strange to me coming from New York, uh, New York, I'm mean, you know, from the New York area where we have bubbles and we play indoors most of the year and 99% of the players play on the rise, right on top of the baseline. And even I was taught, you know, I grew up in the Northeast United States. I played all my juniors in, in New England and I was taught to take every ball early and to hug the baseline and to attack the net and pretty much never to back up. So I don't know if you've come in contact with coaches who teach that way, but there are a lot of coaches who have that philosophy, don't back up, hug the baseline, take the ball early be aggressive, quote unquote. And in Spain, they completely broke all those rules. Players were moving back deep, playing heavy top spin. Um, players were, were defending the court, not just attacking all the time, there was a balance. They would go back and defend and then move forward to attack. And this just blew my mind. And it opened up a whole new world of how to teach tactics to players. So in other, in, in other words, not just teaching attack, 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 teaching players a balance where sometimes it's right to defend and sometimes it's right to attack, which I think is the best way to teach tactics. And it, it taught me that the game doesn't have to be one dimensional, that there is a balance, there is a, an ebb and flow to a point that mature strategic players oftentimes have to give ground and then later in a point they can take ground, that it's not just Take, take, take. That, as the great Jose Higuera says, tennis is a game of give and take, strategically. So you can oftentimes uh, take ground, but sometimes you have to give ground first. So that for me was an uh, amazing awakening. Uh, it was a, an epiphany for me to see players defending deep in the court, coming from an indoor New York City uh, region type training. Uh, philosophy. I, I was, I was sort of uh, in my, I was inframed with this New York way of playing, and and it's like that in California. It's like that in other parts of the of the U.S. that are primarily fast courts and indoors. So it's not just New York. But think about that, guys. How do you teach the game? How have you learned the game? How have your coaches taught you the game? If you're a parent, how does your kid play? Do they hug the baseline and take everything early? Is that the only way to play? Is that somewhat limiting? Is that somewhat one-dimensional? Is there another multi-dimensional way to play that could be better strategically? I think there is. And in Spain, I started to learn that. Now, on the flip side, could you play too defensively? Could you give too much ground? Yes, that sometimes happens, and that's not healthy either. But by and large, player comes to work with me, I'm gonna teach them a balanced game. Good defense and a good offense, but not just one or the other. It's wrong to just play defense, probably wrong to just play offense too. But not every player, not every coach agrees with me. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section, send me an email, join this community of like-minded tennis 
fanatics, of people obsessed with junior tennis and Spanish tennis, join our community. You can watch the show on YouTube. You can watch my uh, big show, the Project Maker show on, also on YouTube or listen to the podcast. I'd invite you to participate in any way that you can. Thanks guys, I'll see you on the next program.